In the annals of historical disasters, one peculiar event stands out for its sheer peculiarity and the unexpected menace it unleashed upon an unsuspecting city. The Great Molasses Flood of 1919 in Boston remains a tragic and bizarre chapter in American history, where a massive tank holding a seemingly innocuous substance transformed into a wave of destruction. This is a story that transcends the ordinary, weaving together the threads of industrial negligence, human suffering, and the relentless march of time. As the year 1919 dawned, Boston was a bustling hub of industrial activity. The First World War had just concluded, and the city was in the midst of a post-war economic boom. Against this backdrop, a seemingly innocuous structure loomed over the city's north end, a colossal tank filled with molasses, a substance usually associated with sweetness and warmth. Little did the residents know that this unassuming structure would soon become the epicenter of a catastrophe that would forever alter the landscape of their lives. The United States Industrial Alcohol Company, owned by the powerful Purity Distilling Company, had erected a 50-foot tall tank in the heart of Boston to store molasses, a key ingredient in the production of industrial alcohol. This tank, with its foreboding presence, held an astonishing 2.3 million gallons of molasses, a quantity that would prove catastrophic when the unexpected unfolded. The tank itself was a colossal structure, constructed with little regard for safety. Its walls were a mere 0.67 inches thick, and the rivets holding it together were substandard, creating a recipe for disaster. The company, driven by wartime demand and economic pressures, had hastily constructed the tank without proper engineering oversight or safety measures. As the tank stood imposingly against the Boston skyline, its dark contents held the promise of profit for the company. Little did anyone suspect that this towering structure would soon give way, releasing a torrent of molasses that would engulf everything in its path. On January 15, 1919, the inhabitants of Boston went about their daily lives, blissfully unaware of the impending calamity. The temperature on that fateful day rose unusually, causing the molasses inside the tank to warm and expand. The structural integrity of the tank, already compromised by shoddy construction, began to falter under the pressure. At approximately 12.30 in the afternoon, a thunderous roar echoed through the north end. The massive tank, unable to withstand the mounting pressure, ruptured open, releasing a vicious wave of molasses that surged through the streets at an astonishing speed. The wave, estimated to be 25 feet high at its peak, moved at a pace of 35 miles per hour, leaving destruction in its wake. As the molasses inundated the neighborhood, buildings crumbled and structures were swept away. The wave spared nothing in its path. Cars, lampposts, and even the steel girders of the elevated train tracks were no match for the relentless onslaught. The once bustling streets of the North End transformed into a surreal and treacherous landscape, with molasses submerging everything in its path. The aftermath of the Great Molasses Flood was nothing short of catastrophic. The once vibrant North End lay in ruins, with a thick layer of molasses coating every surface. Rescue efforts were hampered by the sticky residue as emergency responders and volunteers waded through waist-deep molasses to reach survivors. The death toll was staggering. 21 lives were lost, and an additional 150 people suffered injuries of varying degrees. The victims included men, women, and children caught in the merciless grip of the molasses wave. The city, still reeling from the shock of the disaster, faced the daunting task of recovering and rebuilding. In the aftermath, investigations were launched to determine the cause of the catastrophe. The United States Industrial Alcohol Company, responsible for the ill-fated tank, faced legal repercussions. Engineers and experts scrutinized the construction of the tank, uncovering a trail of negligence and disregard for safety regulations. The legal proceedings that followed the Great Molasses Flood exposed a pattern of negligence and greed within the United States Industrial Alcohol Company. 
the rushed construction of the tank, substandard materials, and a lack of proper inspections were glaring evidence of the company's prioritization of profit over safety. The victims' families sought justice for their loved ones, launching lawsuits against the company. The legal battle was protracted and complex, with the defense arguing that the unusually warm weather, not the inherent flaws in the tank's construction, had caused the disaster. However, the evidence against the company was overwhelming, and in the end, justice prevailed. In 1920, a year after the tragedy, a court-appointed auditor found the United States Industrial Alcohol Company responsible for the disaster. The company was forced to pay substantial damages to the victims and their families. The Great Molasses Flood became a landmark case, highlighting the need for stringent safety regulations and oversight in industrial practices. The physical scars of the Great Molasses Flood were slowly healed as the city of Boston embarked on a reconstruction effort. However, the psychological impact lingered for years to come. The once tranquil North End bore witness to the horrors of the day, and the survivors carried the emotional weight of the tragedy with them. The disaster also had a lasting impact on industrial regulations. The need for comprehensive safety measures and thorough engineering oversight became evident, leading to reforms in the way such structures were constructed. The Great Molasses Flood served as a wake-up call prompting authorities to prioritize the well-being of the public over corporate interests.